on this episode of the Sindago Podcast. A shitty movie, censorship, poor decisions, and chinchilla discrimination. What's up, guys? Welcome to the second Sindago podcast. I am your dinky doonad. And I'm George Washington. Uh, today, uh, we wanted to talk to you guys about an experience we had. What was that experience, Ryan? Our experience was going to see an uh, Oscar-nominated film known as Get Hard, starring Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart. And Oscar-nominated? No, I, not even close. Absolutely not. That was a good <laughs> joke. <laughs> so... It pains me a little bit. So before we get into describing the experience, uh, I want to tell you guys about our expectations for this okay. movie. Okay. So Ryan and I have seen a few movies together here since we since we moved, and in almost every movie there's been a trailer for Get Hard. Yes. And you know, just moving to LA, we're getting used to seeing movie posters everywhere. And there's a giant movie poster for this. Um, in this uh, shopping area, you go down some escalators. It's probably the height of like two levels, two stories. It's a two-story poster. It's I would huge. Say. Yeah, yeah. And the design of it is just oh, my oh yeah. The it, Photoshop it, it, and it and it changes so frequently. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So anyway, we've seen this. This movie's been in our face. And my first thought whenever I see a movie like that, I'm like, oh, ugh, it's gonna yeah, be like, a shit show. I'm, I'm not gonna like it. It was odd because they had. Big stars. I mean, I mean, okay. Will Ferrell's big, is a big mm -hmm. comedic actor. Kevin Hart's getting up there. You could say he's big, but right now I still think he's in his phase of climbing the ladder. He's yeah. still climbing. Well, well, I think that he <clears throat> has definitely established himself as a huge comedian of our generation. However, he hasn't, he's, he doesn't come close to the, uh, to the legend, to the legendariness of Will Ferrell. Yeah. Absolutely not. And that's not a dig on him. I'm not saying that he, that doesn't make him a good comedian. I think it just takes time. Time is a big factor of that because uh, Will Ferrell was an old school, and then of course he, you know, he's been in a lot of movies like Elf. He had Elf, and he had Anchorman, so he's had a lot of big. Um, I w would you call them cult classics? Some, um, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't they're, even they're say they're that cult. because I mean the the humor is so accessible. Like yeah. he just has that dumb humor that that it doesn't take all too much to really, you know understand his yeah. uh, you know what i mean like there's not a lot of layers to it but in the same time it's humor that really only he can pull off yeah like he is the face of that awkward humor he was like the first napoleon dynamite yeah. my my opinion without yeah. without him there would be no napoleon dynamite i don't think yeah and um well and the thing about this is i don't think will ferrell's brand of humor works in this movie i don't think so at all um it, some of it made me laugh but it was ill-placed mm-hmm you know, what's funny is I didn't realize this until I started watching the movie more, that I think their humor, the two of them, is actually a lot more similar than I would have ever expected, seeing them yeah. both um, on center stage together, because they both have this thing where they will take... I mean, and this is really just... Like, even Louis, Louis C.K. does this yes. a lot, where he'll, he will take one idea, and then he'll make it even funnier by going over it from every direction. Mm -hmm. So he'll make something funny, and then he'll describe why it's funny. He'll never just just say, you know, he'll never just hand it to you on a plate, you know, of, of why it's funny. But he'll approach it from all these angles and make it funnier and funnier, this one idea. And they do that so many times in this movie. Yes. They would rephrase the same thing over and over, like, I do not want to do that. That is something I don't want to do. Yes. That can't happen. <laughs> Stop yeah. it. I no. And, and, it's, and it's not as bland of a statement as you presented, but they do do that. Like, they start out with a bland statement such yeah. that, and then they just take it. So far. So Will Ferrell, far. I think, is still... Will Ferrell is better at doing that than Kevin Hart is. Oh, yeah. But Kevin Hart is still quick-witted in his own sense. He is, yeah. Kevin Hart definitely <clears throat> brings something to the table different than Will Ferrell. But I do see the similarities yeah. in that. It's almost like a lot of Will Ferrell's humor was rubbing off onto Kevin Hart in mm -hmm. this film, I think. And another thing I was I said during the film is that another reason why I, I did not like this film is because it seems like... Um, White people be like, black people be like, the yeah. movie sponsored by Vine. I said that during the movie, and yeah. it really did feel like that because Will Ferrell was playing, you know, I'm not just saying he was playing a white guy. He was playing the stereotype of a white guy. Right. And while Kevin Hart was not playing the stereotype of a um, black character, it's just he, he had to go and do that. And mm -hmm. so it kind of came off as that whole, like, black people be like, you know, I don't know, yeah. that, like King Batch and all of them have done yeah yeah definitely this movie uh played to a lot of 
like stereotypical uh funny vine ish that mm -hmm. whole that whole vibe and and that's actually uh that actually is a fantastic segue into something that we've both agreed to talk about <clears throat> which is the acceptable humor on uh different like subject mediums matters. so well across different subject okay. matters and across different mediums like vine youtube mm -hmm. youtube being a huge one yeah um like the difference of like what's acceptable um in the theater and on youtube and on vine and any and yeah like, it's very different and what's funny and it really and really what comes down to the yeah. to the style of humor how mm -hmm. while i was watching this movie there were so many times when i was like i'm gonna see that on vine I'm yeah. going to see somebody's going to cut that part. They're going to add a subtitle. They're going to add bruh or something. Uh -huh. And then it's going to be posted on Vine. I mean, it's so... Those things are what's killing Vine for me. Yeah. I'm not making a bland statement, yeah. but for me, I just I can't do it. I can't do it because I think it's like, it's a, it can be a funny joke if implemented well. Yeah. But it, they it do just, it over and over and over and over again to the point where it's not even a joke. It's just, it just becomes a thing. Right. And just to let our listeners know... Uh, Ryan over here is a huge Vine fan, and I, I say that in an interesting way because there's a lot of Vine that he hates and that we both – he'll come to me and show me a Vine that's just so unfunny it's funny. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, he shows me gold because he yeah. loves Vine. He's on Vine all the time. He also makes, God, some of the most hilarious Vines. Every I don't understand how you come up with these ideas. Every now and then. But you do too. There's a there's a character <laughs> that actually made it into our most recent Syndigo that's right, sketch. That's right. Uh, not the whole character, just the effect you did with your glasses where you kind of put the cla glasses on the side of your head and it yeah. makes your like eyes look a little bit bigger and closer together. <laughs> oh, and you know what? You just reminded me. Um, I want to let you guys know because this is one of the funniest things I have ever heard of anyone doing. So... To kind of to kind of backtrack here to to explain the the backstory of this 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 has to do with social media Instagram uh, <clears throat> more specifically so we went to a uh, a convention kind of like a okay a big panel thing for uh, CMF Hollywood CMF is Campus Movie Fest mm, they go around the different universities and it's uh it's a competition and we won Best Picture we did yeah mm -hmm. for at, at the University of South Carolina where Ryan was attending yeah. at the time we submitted a film it was kind of a comedy it was kind of a yeah. cerebral thing and it was called The Afterlife go mm -hmm. check it out on yep. our channel mm -hmm. Um, it's black and white, super artsy. It has college film written all over it. I think one of the reasons we'll get back to what you were talking about, but real yeah. quick, one of the reasons that uh, it was black and white was because it just didn't look right in color. It no, just like it, it didn't. just the the cameras we used in the way in the, the environment just didn't settle well with color, and yeah, so black it, and white just made it look a little cleaner. Yeah, it made it look cleaner. It, it definitely it brought up the like the heavenly, or not even heaven, but that that purgatory of like yeah. lifelessness. So it really did have actual um, like you know, meaning behind it. It wasn't just a move we made mm -hmm. to seem artsy. But yeah, anyway, so that's that's the afterlife. So because we won Best Picture, we were invited out here to Hollywood and um it's a rather big convention. It was, um it was huge. Because yeah. it's a lot of university and a lot of winners and not even a lot of winners, a lot of sponsors and mm -hmm. they uh, get a lot of guests. We met uh, the guys from Five Second Films yes. and uh, some of them from Funny or Die. Yeah, yeah, Funny or Die did a panel because uh, all these um these talented people uh, be it from you know behind the scenes in the industry to being talent in the industry and everywhere in between, they would come and do panels and workshops and you know like there was the director of all the Ace Ventura movies and a lot more that was there. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a guy from um, Red Cameras who came and talked about cameras. God, I love those so beautiful cameras. Oh, man. I mean, we can rent them anytime we want at YouTube, yeah. but it's like they. I'm not dissing YouTube, but they create such a barrier between what. You know how long it would take to get that, and the work you have to do to get that to where it's like, we're fine with the cameras we use now because Mark has really nice cameras. Yeah. But if 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 we needed a red, we could probably just go through Mark. We wouldn't have to do the work to get. Yeah. One for anything. Yeah. My my thing is that I'm so selfish with that kind of stuff. Like, as as much fun as it would be, and as easy as as it would be, and I'm sure I'll turn around and do this one day. But mm -hmm. like, come up with an idea and be like, all right, look, we're gonna go to YouTube. We're going to hire a camera guy or whatever, and he's going to take care of it. I'm so selfish. I want to learn how to use it. Yeah. I want to learn how – and it's really just like mole work. It's just learning buttons and you know, it has nothing to do with like your skill as a photographer because when it comes down to it, every camera does the same yeah. thing. Just that you know, does about – Sixteen to thirty thousand dollars more yeah. work than the cameras we yeah, use. Yeah, and also like it's also name recognition because you could do, have a close up of a spec. You could like, well, sorry, a close up of something on a desk and rack focus it. And you know, if it's some college, you'll just it'll people will just oh, that's just an artsy college student. But if you you know put 
Uh, Steven Spielberg, it's like wonderful direction by Steven Spielberg. A lot of it also, I think, comes down to name recognition. Yeah. Because yeah. um, even though, like, what the camera produces the quality, and even though the, du- the director gets, you know, the shots that he needs, or the cinematographer actually gets the shots, but the uh-huh. director directs, you know, the crew, um, I just really. <sighs> I don't know. It's just a battle between whether, you know, the shot that's looking just magnificent is more the director, Mm -hmm. the director's mind, the cinematographer's mind, the writer's mind. Where does that come from? Dude, that's something I've always wondered. That's what that's what is so weird about what we do, because you and I call all the shots. We do everything hand Mm -hmm. in hand, you know, and I couldn't imagine I couldn't imagine, you know, working with literally hundreds of crew members. Yeah. And not, I'm not talking about just PAs that are walking around getting everybody coffee and, mm-hmm. and you know, all the, the stereotypes. Like people that you have to trust to people do these big that things that you're so extremely used to doing. Talent, people that have been working for years and people that have all their own visions and for like hundreds of minds to come together to create one, one product. Yeah. And that's something that we've yet to really dive into. Now, we have talked about getting crews together for mm-hmm. way bigger shoots, and that's something that we have to plan out ahead of time. And that's something I'm definitely looking yeah. forward to doing. Yes. Uh, to doing, but but yeah. So to bring it back to uh, what I was talking about, we were talking about social media, mm. and I was talking about Campus we talk- Movie Fest, which we- now we went above and beyond of just explaining, <laughs> you know, not not just what it is, but yeah. what the people do there. Yeah. So so we were at this convention, and uh, there was a competition during the week. They had little social media competitions to pass around, you know, certain hashtags of that that the Campus Movie Fest wanted to promote. So they had an Instagram competition, and this Instagram competition, the the rules were you had to upload a 15 or however long video, longest yeah. being 15 seconds on yeah. Instagram, and it had to get the most likes. Mm-hmm. That's, all it, that's all it needed. Oh, just the most all likes. It, it didn't need to be the best. Nope. You didn't need to put any effort into it. It just needed the most likes. What's Which, funny is it was the best. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, it, it could have just been shit and people could have exploited their popularity, which happened. <laughs> which is exactly, which exactly what, happened. what happened and how – continue the story. Let's not – Okay, de- yeah. I don't not... want to deviate too yeah. far because this is hilarious. Okay, so Ryan – like I was saying earlier, Ryan makes some like incredibly hilarious line crossing vines and he decided to enter this competition. And it was unbeknownst to me because um I was just there. Yeah. I was there with my girlfriend and another friend at the time, a mutual friend of Ryan and I's, and we were hanging out doing our thing and I come back to meet him up or to meet up with him and he's like, dude, check out this Instagram <laughs> post. Now, I want to do the honors of, of explaining this Instagram post. Okay. And I well, really want you guys to watch it too. Okay. We should upload it somewhere. Yeah. On, yeah. We, we should, can put a link in the description of this podcast. We will. We will. Yeah. So maybe I won't even describe it. Maybe I'll just let you guys just watch it because we're absolutely doing that. We're okay. going to put a link to this. And if okay. not, we can rip it off your phone somehow and upload it. To YouTube Somewhere. and put the YouTube link or like I it, unlisted on my YouTube account or something. Anything, anything. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. Words cannot do this Instagram post justice. It is hilarious. It left me jaw dropped and he won. What did you win, Ryan? I won <laughs> a, a year subscription to uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, which I then gave away to uh, a certain a, someone. Yeah, a certain someone. It was, <laughs> I feel so bad about this. Okay, so. Oh. I'm going to explain this. I'm going to. I'm gonna, I get it out, this. man. Okay. Just get okay. it out. Get okay. it out. So I'm a smart guy, um, and I handle breakups really well. <laughs> um, sar- all the sarcasm in the world intended. So I was in a relationship for three years um, with this girl who I met in high school, and we broke up. And then, you know, it, it was a while after the breakup, but I kind of take things harder than most people, I guess. I just, I don't know what it is about. It. So He's um, an emotional <clears throat> guy, folks. He's, he yeah. wears his heart on his sleeve. Yeah. We love him. Oh, and uh, so then there was this uh, another girl that I met uh, through Twitter. Lo and behold, I don't. It, it's not a romantic story. This is all like Ryan. Why the fuck did you do this? And if you guys know Ryan, he is like Twitter crazy. So if you ever want to talk to Ryan, it's not hard to reach out to him on Twitter. Yeah. What's just, your Twitter handle, Ryan? Uh, at E L I R Y M A G E E. That's at Eli Ryan McGee. And what is yours, Sir Daniel? My Twitter handle is. At D A N K Y R E, that's at Dan Kyer, and I rarely check it. I should get better at that, but if you want to it talk to me. Makes you more mysterious. And yeah, well, I don't really mean for that. <laughs> <laughs> this gives this mysterious <laughs> vibe about you. I really don't intend that, but it, hey, if it works, it works. Yeah. You know? So, anyways, I uh, met her through Twitter because she was a somewhat fan of Syndigo. 
And I thought she was pretty cute. Aren't most people somewhat fans of us? <laughs> yeah, most people. If you could call, I don't know, upwards of what, 127,000 of this. Most people, 127,000. If we must say so ourselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah, go ahead. I'm so sorry. there was a relationship. We played Minecraft a lot. It was mainly just kind of like Skype, uh, Minecraft, and texting relationship. I ended up just getting too far ahead of myself. I was like, okay, yeah, you, because she was also slightly into filmmaking and wanted to get into it. So I'm like, oh, here are the programs. Here's a year subscription to Adobe, to Adobe Creative Cloud. So she got all the programs for free. For a year. Yeah, and then she broke up with me because she had to focus on school or something. Mm. Yeah. Ugh. Honestly, that's the, that's probably the best thing that could have happened. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, I yeah. could have given, like, oh, no, that that's not all I lost. I purchased a plane ticket for over $300 to visit her. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, God. It's so much. It's just money just down the drain. Ugh. But I learned a very important lesson. Don't what don't date through Twitter. Yeah, don't date through Twitter. I now have a wonderful girlfriend. You do. Who hopefully in a few podcasts won't be like, so I had this girlfriend. I had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so I had this girlfriend, and she listens to my podcast, found out this story about this other girl I never told her, and, you know, well, she's history. God. Well, yeah, so... um, but and, and don't think this was a long relationship. This lasted a month, um, maybe? I think it was like two months. Yeah. I think it was somewhere on there. And I remember when it started because you just, you became like a recluse times 10 and you were yeah. always like, you I need to play Minecraft. And I was like, oh, okay. But, um, but yeah. Uh, we all deal with problems in our own way. I just happened to form relationships through uh, Twitter, play Minecraft romantically with another human being, <laughs> and then uh, give away a bunch of hundreds of dollars of material. Hey, dude, you, <laughs> they, that, that is a very like, like up-to-date way to make a mistake. Over social media, yeah. you're just such a generational kid, man. You're yeah. like, right I gotta here. stop. I you, gotta you stop. You stick with the times. <laughs> well, you have stopped. And yeah. you're, with, you're in a great relationship now. Yeah. So yeah. that's awesome, man. But yeah, I'm 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 digging on the single life right now. I really really like it. Um, being out here and being alone, like I haven't really been looking at all. I've just been spending time on myself. I, I don't know if you guys can hear that. Kind of got distracted a, from the loud revving engine outside. There, that if you was can like hear it. that was like a Formula One just right yeah. outside our door. I don't know what that was. Anyway, so yeah, so that's that's you know because obviously you were all wondering if I was single. I mean, there I was. It. What we know, we know each other. So well, maybe. There, there's no maybe. What is well, that? Well, I was just wondering if you were single. If you guys, you know, the f the way I'm portraying this, I'm kind of like twisting my hair in my finger. He's like rocking back in his chair. Like, it's he's very got cute. This, like, I look very cute right now. I'm trying to kind of just well, like dude, dazzle him. You always look cute. Oh, come on. I could lose some weight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The right, truth. So, so, okay. <laughs> Anyways, no, so there was this great, there was this bigger thing that we were that we were going to talk about, and it we has, always trail off as we I said. Always trail off. Okay. So YouTube and appropriateness. That is what I want to talk about. Okay. That is what I was getting at. With we were talking about like you know what what's funny on Vine, what's funny on YouTube, yep. and 15 minutes later we are here again, and here we're back. So we're really we we want to get this off our chest because this is something yeah. that we talk about all the time. Yes, um, you know. So this is this is talking about offensiveness. Mm -hmm. This is this is us. Uh, us having the chance to actually say like have a conversation, yeah. um, about it while not making like a scripted vlog about it, not yeah. like going to Twitter because sometimes I I go to Twitter about mm -hmm. this type of thing. Or Tumblr, but, Tumblr's yeah. a great place for people to yeah. Throw I've responded their problems up. a few. I've responded to a few posts just about some things, but yeah. now we're actually going to kind of go into a little bit of detail and just. Just lay everything out there and our opinions on offensiveness right. and, you know, what jokes are and aren't okay to tell. So, so guys, we actually have a few clips prepared here. So we're going to play you some clips from our videos, and we are not ashamed, okay? We understand that these are things that we've said before, and we're not proud of them. They're not something that we still stand by. They're jokes that we made um, that they don't line up with our humor anymore you know yeah. it's not it it left a bad taste so here are a few clips from factual factoids versus opinion minions the two of you are gayer than a mississippi man train the male seahorse always carries the babies well i think that gay horse should die of rabies female factual 
Okay, and um, the reason we played that clip and are just bringing it to everyone's attention because I recently saw something on Tumblr, and it's also something we thought about, is um, someone brought it up and was saying that, you know, our humor, you know, is just kind of very just offensive, um, which it can be, but, and then it, they brought this example of, which they're, they're uh, homophobic, I've heard that. Um, so this clip, you know, we're saying things are gay, um, and I'm not, this is, I'm not defending this clip at all. We're not yeah. going to defend this. You know, no. it, it's it's a there's shame no, that we went no to this defending. level. There, it, it is it is shameful that we went to this level, and it definitely rubs off on our character, yeah. like our actual character, that yeah. we thought this was funny enough. I, I mean, there are so many reasons why this didn't work. Not only because it was wrong, story-wise, yeah. we were the factual factoids. Yeah. We're happy-go-lucky, factual people. Yeah. The last thing that our characters should have said, was, like, this is us admitting our mistakes, yeah. folks. Like, this And is, we're not going to run away from it. That video will be posted. Mm -hmm. um, we'll post a link. You can watch it. You yeah. know, whatever. You know, we're not running away from it. We're not going to, mm -hmm. oh, no, people don't need to know about this. This right. happened. Right. Unfor unfortunately, we, we wrote this out. Right. So it, it's important for us to, to talk about this and let you guys know that we are aware of it, okay? That, you know, that doesn't excuse us. Mm -mm. You, you know, we shouldn't be, you know, uh, you know, our, all of our charges shouldn't be dropped, yeah. so to speak, for this. But now there is one thing I want to say, and this isn't me defending what we said, but I do want to make clear that, you know, speaking not only for this sketch in particular, but for other sketches we've done and even sketches we'll do in the future. Mm hmm when our characters say something, it's the character saying it. Yeah. And that, and that goes for yeah. everything. Anytime and, an actor or an actress mm -hmm. is saying something. And when ahead. you say the character, is, yeah, but you still wrote it. Yes, mm -hmm. we wrote it for those respective characters. We did terrible. We did a terrible job with these characters. It just turned out to be like a rap battle. And the opinion minions saying those things, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that was their character, but it sucks that the factual right. factoids uh, stoop to that level. Yeah. Um, but it is the characters. You know, we write it just because um, – I don't know what the name of the movie is. I'm going, I'm going very just broad okay. um, on this. Um, if, you know, the writer of a movie has, you know, has to write for someone like a Hitler. Let's just bring him out. You know, right. he's the one that everyone – does that mean he believes everything that this character that he's writing is saying? And that's a – yeah, but Ryan, that's a – that's a non-fictional character. Okay, how about any villain in a movie mm. that kills someone or does something wrong? Yeah. Is it is the writer a psychopath for doing that? Yeah. No. I mean, is, is like, yeah. And I think that that is a, as good of as an, as good, excuse me, as good as. <laughs> as good of an analogy as, as a, that is. Thank you, dude. That's why you're here. Is to, to go behind me and say the things <laughs> I can't. Um as great of an analogy as that is, Sir. Um, it absolutely is a little more like extreme than what we're doing. Not yeah. to say that you're wrong. No, no. But but yeah, like I think that it we should make it clear to people that you know again not to defend the things we were saying because it's not funny. It's not funny. What it's we never said in that, funny. No, no. What we said that's not funny. That shouldn't even be laughed at, even as our characters. It's not good writing. But we do want to be clear that in the future. You know, it's not going to be to that degree, but if we do make racy jokes, you know, for the people and, and see, that's, that's the other thing is that a lot of times I find that if we have to explain ourselves, mm -hmm. if it's not obvious that it is a character, then we're not doing our job as entertainers, yeah. making people aware that this is a character like, like a perfect example. But that also example. gets you caught in the whole thing of differentiating between what people are legitimately like criticizing this in in a way that you can take seriously yeah um like for for instance our most recent sketch was the adoption mm -hmm. uh you know and it's like um i saw a lot of people saying that you know oh you just used the last part as a scapegoat the part that yeah. we actually brought to light and it's like and to and to fill you guys in if you haven't seen that yeah. sketch uh basically it's about it's it's this really obscure out there weird Almost gro like really grotesque yeah. commercial for this like crazy fictional adoption agency. Adult Swim, w yeah, very vibe. Adult Swim yeah. vibe. Yeah, we're huge Adult Swim fans. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that is that is one of our biggest influences. But at the end, we made a segment where we actually sit down with the camera in a, in a completely serious manner and talk about the seriousness of uh, orphanhood and yeah. how much of a problem it is, and. It pretty much went. It went off as well as we wanted yes. it to. You know, it's super. This is the first time that we've ever actually done this. That we've ever actually looked people in the face immediately after making these mm -hmm. crazy jokes. So I there think, is something serious that lies behind these jokes. Absolutely, and we recognize yeah. that. Yeah, and and I feel like because you know, 
on TV when or if there's a more established talent making like, you know, really controversial, uh, usually like these commentaries on, you know, social injustices Mm -hmm. or just any kind of gross taboo thing. It's usually somebody on TV who has this big, long catalog of things they've worked on. They have interviews. Mm -hmm. So you, if you want to know more about that person, you just go online and read about their life and then you come to understand, okay, no, they're not actually racist. They're not Mm -hmm. actually evil people. But because we just make these videos and we've always been the kind of people to just kind of like do it and then we're not always talking, yeah. you know, this is, this is why this podcast is great. Cause yeah. now people really get yes. to see who we are mm-hmm. and that's what we really want. And, and now, especially with this edition of this serious part of the end of the video, mm-hmm. people are really getting a window into who we are and that no, you know, contrary to popular belief, we're not crazy, sadistic idiots. Like, yeah. We actually just, you know, we just make videos and make us laugh. Now our sense of humor is crazy and yeah. sadistic at yeah. times, but that's but that, all it is, is humor. That comes from the whole thing, like our humor. Um, for me, humor and comedy, they're very therapeutic to mm-hmm. some very dark subjects. Absolutely. Um, uh, I come af- uh, from a family of divorce and I, you know, I've had my mix with uh, depression mm-hmm. uh, mo- uh, and um, anxiety. Mm-hmm. And does that mean like I, I shy away from jokes about depression or anxiety? No. Does it? Yeah. No. And I mean, I come from a perfect life. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I come from, uh, you know, different circumstances myself and I've had my fair share of hard times just as yeah. everyone else has. I learned actually an important lesson from someone that was really important to me. And they said, you can never compare somebody's problems yeah. ever because you never truly know how much it affected them. You know, whether it's a loss of a friend mm-hmm. or even as minuscule to what could seem as minuscule as a loss of some kind of personal property, like a yeah. ring or, or, you know, it doesn't matter. You people are different and they can be attached or they can think about things in whatever way that we're not all the same. And to Absolutely. claim an ideal is how it should be. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's somewhat crazy. You always have to have at least, you always have to be open-minded. Yeah. And staying open-minded is super important. And, and which is why I love our fans so much. Yes. We have some of the best fans because they are so open-minded. The people who stick with us mm-hmm. and the people who laugh at our jokes, we hope. Yeah. You know, we do have a lot of fans that come from Mark. And because of that, a lot of our fans, you know, a lot of times they'll come and watch our videos not necessarily because they heard about our comedy you know, they're not coming for the reasons that they might have for other YouTube channels where they're like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm into comedy. This is my chance. Yeah. They come because Mark's in one of our videos and they're like, okay, I like Mark. Let's see what this is all about. And some stay, some go. But the people who stay, they're, they're so cool because they obviously are very open-minded. Mm-hmm. They are very, they're just cool people. Yeah. So thank you. Like, seriously, thank you guys. Like, I mean, you guys are great for sticking around with us, you know, through all these crazy jokes. And it, It's very cool to find a large sum of people that share something with us. And Mm -hmm. that is our out there sense of humor. And when I say out there sense of humor, you know, everyone can laugh at a good fart, Mm -hmm. but not many people can laugh at, you know, something that Tim and Eric does. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, (laughs) which is definitely something we get compared to a lot. And yeah, I mean, I'll totally admit that like when it comes to editing, like one of my biggest influences is definitely Tim and Eric. Cause I'm a Mm -hmm. huge, huge fan. We saw them live Yeah, when they came, excuse me, to Atlanta. I mean, yeah. So that We're huge Timberlake fans. So yeah, great. let's go ahead and put that to rest. Yes, uh, it's not like people are because people all the time, you know, are like, "Hey, you're just like Tim and Eric," and you know, they might expect to be like, "Well, you know, what? shut up." We do no, yeah. no, I'm not going to do great. that. They're, of course, we yeah, we draw a lot of influence. We were a lot different than them in a lot of ways yeah. too. But I'm happy to to accept that because that's a compliment. Yeah, to me. it is. I mean, when you, when you like, it's almost like if a cinematographer is doing something, he's like, yeah, that looks like some out of a Christopher, you know, Nolan <laughs> movie. It's like, why? Why is why, why is that? It, no, be- it's not. I'm not trying to copy him. <laughs> yeah, I'm, no, I'm saying it was really good. It looks really good. That's yeah. the only thing I could really compare it to. Yeah. No, it's my own thing. Okay, yeah. well, you know. Yeah, it's all about take your, the compliment. <laughs> yeah, it's all about being open minded and your perspective on what you do. And yeah. I think it's really healthy to be able to take. Yeah. That's, would that is that even criticism? That just sounds like great compliments to me. Yeah, but but yes, um, continue with what you were saying though. I think you were about uh, well. There was only I don't. I, maybe I'm not going on the same train of thought, but it was going back to something else. Mm-hmm. Um, people um, get offended and say that we shouldn't make the jokes because it, it it offends them personally. Yeah, and that's something that I wanted to also touch on. I touched on it briefly, but um, uh, I don't want to say sucks, you know. But we're going to keep making the jokes. But at the same time, I don't want to censor ourselves because of because someone went through something you know like mm-hmm. 
if there's a car accident shown in a movie and it's played up for laughs, like, oh, man, Tim got in another car wreck, blah, blah, blah. And it's played for laughs just because someone in my family got in a car accident and they were injured doesn't mean that they should not be able to have fun with that subject. Yeah, the people um, who made it. Yeah. The, yeah, yes. yeah. To be clear, the, yeah, he's, when he says they, he means the people who wrote and came mm-hmm. up with the idea and made yeah. it happen. Yeah. Those people shouldn't be stopped because when it really comes down to comedy – there is honestly no limits. Mm-mm. The limit is to each is to the person who's making it. Yeah, and you know, for you to say that that they're not a, for for you to say you don't like it and it's not funny, you can say that yes. at the top of a mountain, and I will I will I will applaud you for having the courage to say you don't like something. Yes, please tell me you don't like something. Yeah. Now, should you affect whether or not they can do it legally? Absolutely not. That's what the first amendment's <laughs> yeah. for. But I mean, definitely, you know, logically, you just can't. It's a it's a battle that's not worth fighting. If you want to talk to them, if you want to express your opinion and do it in a mature, open minded way, yeah. you might be able to make a change. Yeah. Criticism, you know, helps people. Absolutely. You know, We're criticism, all for criticism. Yeah. Yeah. Criticism is a big thing. But when you go along um wording your um complaints or arguments in such a way to where you just want something changed. That is censorship, and I do not stand by censorship. It's a very, in my opinion, I'm going to say the word, it's, it's a very selfish act, mm-hmm. some uh, censorship, because it's wanting people to go by your mindset. Yeah, I'm, We do comedy, and we like people that like our comedy, but we're not asking every comedic group or every, every fan to like our stuff, and because we're the true, we're true comedy, you know, other comedy channels like Red Link or Smosh, they're not true comedy, we're true comedy. We're not saying that. No, and they're also great. Yeah, I yes. like both those channels. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just, I really do think censorship in most cases is just very... It's, it's so mm. selfish because it's mm-hmm. taking creativeness away, and that's what that's one of the freedoms that I do have yeah. uh, that I'm that I'm able to have and express. Yeah, I mean, we we wouldn't be if if certain things weren't allowed, mm-hmm. and not even just not allowed on YouTube, but if you know if we didn't have the opportunity on YouTube or with Mark to make these crazy ideas that we have and and push the limits with our humor or be gross sometimes or be witty sometimes mm-hmm. or however we decide we want the sketch to go because, you know, not every sketch is going to be super yeah. goofy. Not every sketch is going to be super witty. Yeah. Not that we're super witty, but like, you know what I mean? <laughs> They're not going to come across as super witty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we, we layer our jokes and I think we should definitely take an episode in the future and really – like tear a video apart and yeah. explain all the layers to it because because a lot of times we find that there might be some elements to our videos that aren't caught by the audience and that yeah. could be a fault of ours that we're not yeah. displaying the joke well but I also think like there's a lot of times I'll be watching one of our videos with a friend of ours or something mm-hmm. and pick it apart and point something out they didn't see and it oh really no yeah. way. like so I really want to give you guys the fans an opportunity to to kind of get into our heads when we're making sketches but that's that's another conversation for a podcast. In the future. Uh, in the future, so. Coming soon. Coming soon, to yeah. To a Sindago we... podcast near you. <laughs> the thing we are going to do at the end of this episode that's going to be the beginning of the episode. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, are we, are we done with this subject? Is there anything more you want to say about um, it? Anything say more? It? I, think if there's, I think if there's anything more we, we want to bring up, uh, it should be brought on by you, the viewers. Like, yeah. if you guys, you know, absolutely get on Twitter, get on our Facebook um, you know, reach out to us. Let us know if this is something that you have an opinion on because yeah. we'd love to hear it. And if we don't favorite or retweet you, that doesn't mean we haven't seen it. We, we both, mm-hmm. our eyes more than likely will see whatever you comment. Yeah, because we don't get that many, especially on Twitter. Especially yeah. on Twitter. If you if you comment something on Twitter, if we don't retweet it or favorite it, as I said, we probably have seen it. Just you know, within a twenty four hour period. Because sometimes we're busy. So that's your challenge to do something so insane. We can't not favorite it or retweet it. <laughs> yeah. So that's your challenge, folks. <laughs> yes. I say folks now because I have a podcast you voice on. Fo- so yeah. I say folks. That's like my thing. All right, folks. You need a thing, dude. Folks. I say folks. Okay. I say folks. Do you want to say folks? No, you need a folks. whole new word, dude. Okay. You got to have like a sit, like a, like a, like a leader talking guy. It's happening. Pimpins. Pimpin, dude. That <laughs> no, was pimpin'. God, no. Oh, dude. That's I watched you. a documentary on it uh, yesterday. On pimping? On, 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 well, on pimping and um, the whole process that goes with that of so uh, it was trafficking. Com- so it was a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> no. <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> that contradicts no. everything I just said. But no, that's, that's actually terrible. That's, that's something that we addressed at the end of our most recent video. Mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah, it had to do with like Las Vegas and like their laws and stuff towards oh, prostitution wow. and escorts. It was it was pretty it was interesting. Um, that's not what got me sad though. You want to know what got me sad? Oh, what got you sad? Yesterday I learned that I could not adopt a chinchilla. Oh God, with the chinchilla again! <laughs> oh jeez, you know what? Just explain the situation. I think it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous <laughs> rule. No, you can't guys, sit there and say, he, oh, again, it's oh, over. Guys, you know, it's a fucking ridiculous not, rule. He hasn't dropped this. And I don't blame him because it was obviously very I wanted a very him. cute chinchilla. Okay, a chinchilla is small. It's the size of two of my fists put together. It is small. If, if that, dude. If that. Our apartment allows dogs and cats. And tigers. No. Okay, sorry, bears. <laughs> no, they Lions? allow... They allow... <laughs> I wish. Regian lions, I'm tigers, not. and bears. This could be, it didn't go in that order. Well, anyways, they allow dogs and cats. They do not allow, I found this out, Penises. rabbits, oh. guinea pigs, or chinchillas. That's now, such what a specific animal to say no to? Yeah, I mean, why? What, what are the reasons you could come up with? You know, they said that they could chew the floorboards. Probably. Dogs could piss all over shit. They can scratch the doors. I, I had a dog um, uh, years and years back that just scratched up one of our doors and like passed the paint and everything. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't understand why that... It's like, no. We, we, it, I think it's because dogs and cats are really cute to a, to a lot, to most people. Yeah, they're and just a a more acceptable. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what it comes down to. If it escapes, if a dog escapes, it's like, oh, hey, where's your home? If a cat escapes, oh, no, where's the yeah, home? Yeah, the just, ah! Still yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I still think like, what? How is it going to escape? Like, I get accidents yeah. happen, but I it's in a its own three story mansion of a cage, and because you would treat this chinchilla right, like it was royalty, like it was fucking royalty. That's just how I am. Yes, I. It, it sucks. You know the dude. The, you would probably give it an enti- You would probably give it two years worth of Adobe Cloud if you could. Yes, if I could. Two years. And I would pay six hundred dollars to fly to meet it. If it moved, if it happened to move away, if it away, moved away, dude. If it moved away because long, it wasn't liking our relationship, you would long distance this chinchilla, dude. Yes. Oh my god! Like I would give it little massages. I'd buy it a mini foot massager jacuzzi tub. Have you seen those things? Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, my mom had one of them. They're, it's like this little pool. It's. It's probably. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. It's like yeah. the size of a pillow, and it's like, and, and, and it like jets like a jacuzzi, except you put your feet in it. Dude, could you I'd imagine a if you could like shrink down? If you could shrink down to the size where that's like a full size pool. Oh my god, dude, that'd be amazing. I'd yeah. love to shrink, honey. I shrunk the kids. I used to watch that a lot. I, yeah, I used to. They had like the Disney ripoff show. Yeah, did you ever watch that? No, it was terrible. But anyways, fuck! I want a chinchilla. Mm. It doesn't make any sense. It yeah, doesn't. dogs, cats, no chinchillas, no... Oh, but they also warned me, just in case, I cannot get a pot belly pig or a mini horse. So now I know. Oh, I was... I was, I was going to go from chinchilla to mini horse. I was just... Man, that that's, close. Because that's the only logical progression <laughs> there. The, yeah. 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 You should have just been like, can I please get a chinchilla? No. And we don't allow mini horses either. <gasps> okay. <laughs> You've crossed the line. <laughs> yeah. This is an outrage. Enough is enough. I just like, like, I just have a, a cigar pops in my mouth. <laughs> this is an outrage. Sir, we're going to need you to put your suit back on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just naked on their desk. <laughs> and you were wearing a suit when you walked in with yeah. a cigar and like a hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I just threw it all off. It's like a rip off. Like Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> Except one of, some of the Velcro just sticks, and I'm like <clears throat> awkwardly tugging at it because my ding dong's like just <laughs> flapping around. <laughs> your ding dong, <laughs> like mean, a little bit of the Velcro like sticks to your nipple and rips the hair out, so you've got a little beetle like bead of blood going yeah. down. Like as you're, and it looks this. serious, but I think it looks epic. They just think it's creepy and weird, and you're like sweating too much. Yeah, but not like too much. Yeah, and then I just yeah, I'll get a cat. I'm not getting a cat, by the nah, way. Nah, dude. We originally, we actually had an idea to get a cat for our first apartment, but because... Named Mr. Fuck. Mr. Fuck. So, yeah, you guys can't steal that. Or if you do steal that, send us a picture of Mr. Fuck. The yeah. Cat. Hashtag Mr. Fuck the cat. Ha- Just to prove you listen to this podcast. Yeah. We're pro- let's try to do that every podcast. Every pod... Yeah, last time... Oh, <laughs> we got so much positive response from the floor asshole. <laughs> yeah. Somebody made... Oh, we, we saw too many floor assholes. 
Yeah. Since there was one there. person that photoshopped an asshole on a floor. That's and that's exactly what I'm referring to. Yeah. One was too many, to be honest. <laughs> I was eating many. we were eating but sushi when that I would happened, love so. to see pictures or photoshop pictures of Mr. Fuck the Cat. If yep. you wanna if you what what does Mr. Fuck the Cat look like, we won't we won't tell you. It's up you to you. Tell us. It's up to you. Hashtag Mr. Fuck the Cat. He could have a hat. Well then that's just cat in a hat. So that's <laughs> that's copyright infringement. He could have he could have earmuffs. He could have he could have kitten a tiara. Oh my god, dude! He could have a tiara. Yes, he yes tiara. You know tiara. Yeah, I just yeah like, I, I'm sorry. That's super. Girl, girl. I messed up the word <laughs> girls and it came out girl. Sorry. Yeah, I'm trying to alleviate the whole gender binary thing. It's. I read a post about it today. Yeah. Yeah. Did it help? I feel a lot better. Really? Yeah. Define changed me. Honestly, it changed you. It changed my clothes. Changed my socks. Well. Change my hairstyle. No, I change your socks. Every morning I get up and I'm just like, Daniel, Daniel. Yeah, and I always kick you away because I'm like, dude, it's it's, but then it's I 5 just, o'clock in the morning. I know, then I have to pull the covers, open your curtains even though you have none. And, it all, and I it just, just pretend to. I just I just go to your window, pretend to open curtains because that's what I've seen in Mary Poppins. And I, why the soup? Why always the soup? Why is it always it's reek It's delicious soup? fucking soup, Daniel. Yeah, but why do you have to eat soup over me while you're putting socks on? <laughs> it's hot and it spills and it burns it, me. That's part of waking you up. But then once you're like, oh my God, you're mad at me, you look up and you're like, that's delicious soup. And then the warmness goes down your throat. Throat, and right. you wake up beautifully and more energized than you would if I was drinking some bullshit like milk. Yeah, yeah. Even though I love but milk. But the milk wouldn't burn my feet when it spills on me while you're, like, because you, like, hold the bowl of soup in your teeth while you're putting would my you rather on. have Would you rather have hot, delicious soup in the morning waking you up or cold milk making you all soggy and moist? Honestly, neither. You could just walk in without either food. Next time I'm going to walk drink. in with both, half and half, and see if that makes that's, you happy. That's abs- Wait, like, instead of milk, you're going to use half and half? N- Yes. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, I think it's about time to wrap up unless you have any other subjects you'd um, like to talk about. No, just just one more thank you to you guys. Like, yep. uh, we got so many downloads. On yeah, we have first... over a thousand downloads within the first two days. Absolutely. That is incredible. It's insane. Like, I only expected like 200. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was mind blowing. I got back today from like band practice and saw that we had so many and I was I was bewildered guys you're killing it and you're making us so so happy and so driven to make so many more yes, of these. I'm excited about this whole podcast thing if you have any friends that enjoy podcasts please tell them about us mm-hmm. and if they don't like us they probably shouldn't be your friends yeah yeah absolutely it, people who don't that's how that's a good like like uh, template for friends if they don't like us you don't like them and if you don't like us uh, you're completely entitled to that and yeah from what we said earlier yeah so that's just so we can't so like we can't say fuck you for hating us we can't say that but you did no we can't though like i'm just telling you what we can't say so what can't we say we can't say that's bullshit you should like us we're awesome and funny mm-hmm. stupid selfish brat we can't say that yeah no we can't say Get off Vine and get onto YouTube, throw away all your other stupid YouTube channels that you watch, and subscribe to Syndigo right now. We can't say that. No, no. We can't. We simply can't. Yeah, but, uh, you know, we'll just be very proper about it and yeah. say you can do whatever you want. Yeah, and, and also what we can say is thank you for listening. Yes. And this has been episode two of the Syndago podcast. Ryan, you want to take us home? Love you.